In his studio, Wu Weishan has made sculptures of Fei Xiaotong, Yang Zhenning, and countless other leading figures in culture and science. Oh, this eye is very expressive. The eye is very expressive. It's like this. Do you see? Yes. So the eye has to be very expressive. I really want to make a big eye. 但是呢，很难想象还是做的再具体一点。Three months later, Wu Weishan held a ceremony to offer the sculpture to Wang Meng. The two friends met again. 我一回头一看，哎呦，活了！嗯，细细的，没有睁很大的这个眼睛呢。哎，我觉得显出了一个思想者的。雕塑只能凝固这一个瞬间，这一个瞬间里面把千万种瞬间凝固在里面。可是你捏出了这么一种既有力量又有思想又有爱的人，我非常感谢你。我应该做一个配得上这个雕像的人。Anyone stepping into Wu Weishan's studio will be struck by an overwhelming sense of historicity. Inspired by the sight of the pantheon of sages and thinkers from China's ancient and modern times. Each turn will reveal the visage of a towering maestro. The scaled-up version of these works now stand on many pedestals across China and the world, symbolizing the prominence of Chinese culture. Li Bei's statue, eight-nine feet tall, has a beautiful Romantic style picture in its mural to represent it. Li Bei's year is a sign of the heavens. The artist Li Qing started to do it. 创作了好多不同的李白，他有无限的空间，浪漫主义也就在这当中可以体现出来。In contrast with Li Bai's elegant ease, the likeness of his contemporary Du Fu is introspective. The poet's concern and love for his country and his people are integrated into the sculpture. 这是流于前者啊，哎，他不得志啊，由于他的不得志。所以他的走路都比较缓慢，慢慢的啊，向前面踱步，而不是大步流星的向前走。那么这个马呢，它要体现这个流于前走和它的主人的这种状态。马都坐得很瘦，头都低着的，也是在慢慢的向前走。他理解主人。In the 1970s, at a primary school in Dongtai, Jiangsu Province. A fifth grade student has just finished his fine art lesson. His earnest effort at depicting a path in front of his home demonstrated a talent that surprised the teacher. That student is Wu Weishan. Wu Weishan was born in a scholarly household in Dongtai, Jiangsu Province. Influenced by family tradition. Wu Weishan developed an intense interest in painting and calligraphy since childhood. 我小时候呢，我们家用的那些碗，都是景德镇的那些师傅们啊，给我外祖父定制的那些碗、盘子、坛子、罐子，所以你上面都有许许多多的我很喜欢的那些仕女、山水。As a schoolboy, Wu Weishan memorized and recited a classical poem each morning, as requested by his father. By the time he entered high school, he had read a wide collection of literary works. I was in the middle school five years old when I started to study. I was very fond of it. 然后就临摹、剪纸用画砖。我那时候才十几岁，十三四岁呀、啊，个子也不高，就走到大街上去画这个巨幅旋转画。我们那个镇上的那个所有的大街的旋转画都是我画的
Many elderly locals can recall how an adolescent had produced all those publicity paintings on the walls along the streets. As people gathered, the boy would often turn his attention to the admiring adults. 我学画的时候就喜欢画那些镇上的、村上的那些农民的形象。我画的那些老人里面有情感，我并不是把它只做一个模特来画，我把它作为一个我表现的那个我热爱的那个普通的人。我在他们脸部的机构里面，他们的长相里面，从他们的眼神、表情里面来找到那种生活的那种温度。吴为山 s path of academic pursuit was not smooth. For two years running. He failed the college entrance exam by one point. In 1979, Wu Weishan left his hometown and arrived at the Wuxi Arts and Crafts College. 去了以后，一看教室里面各种各样的石膏像、维纳斯、大卫这些啊，哇，一下子一种新奇感。还有呢，他那个灰山黑色的土，可以做灰山泥人的，可以做雕塑的。这个黑色的土和白石膏的雕像形成了一个鲜明的对比，一个是西洋的，一个是中国民间的，在主流艺术和乡土文化之间，要找到我自己艺术的生长点。The study at the Wuxi College prepared Wu Weishan for his future as a sculptor. After much effort. Wu Weishan earned his entry to the Fine Art Department at Nanjing Normal University, where he studied oil painting. In 1991, Wu Weishan created a large-scale oil painting titled "Season of Harvest," which won critical acclaim. Just as Wu Weishan was determined to seek greater development in the oil medium, he was greeted by a life-changing opportunity. Lin Changwu, the eldest son of the renowned calligrapher Lin Sanzhi, invited Wu Weishan to create a statue of the late master of cursive style, to be displayed at the Lin Sanzhi Memorial Hall. A genuine admirer of fine calligraphy, Wu Weishan accepted the offer, and undertook the new endeavor. In 1992. Wu Weishan concluded the creation of his first sculpture, portraying a Chinese cultural figure. With critical acclaim, critics noted how Wu Weishan had reproduced the otherworldly spirituality of Lin Sanzhi. The sculpture's success turned Wu Weishan's mind to his social responsibility as an artist. Living in a society being transformed with the rapid expansion of market economy, Wu Weishan realized that the nation's rise would also require spiritual resources. He decided to create likeness of China's cultural notables and use the medium of sculpture to resurrect those outstanding figures from history. The statues will engage the modern Chinese. And help them trace the path of Chinese civilization, and feel the power of Chinese spirit. 只要对中国雕塑史有所研究的人，都会了解到，在中国的雕塑史上，并没有为合作的人塑像的这样的一个传统。所以，我们历史上的孔子、老子、李白、杜甫、苏东坡等等。没有同时代的给他们树立像。历史在我们的雕塑形象里面，它是一个空白。Wu Weishan was determined to fill the gap with his own hands. He called this undertaking the sculpture project of historical and cultural icons. 所以我呢，开始给自己立了这么样一个项目。没有经费，就自己。Starting with the more familiar figures, Wu Weishan soon found the right approach to the project. Then there emerged the irreplaceable, defiant Lu Xun, the eccentric yet lifelike Qi Baishi, the hale and hearty Huang Binghong, 
the irresistible Gao Er Shi, the free-spirited Wu Zuoren, as well as Xiao Xian with her supreme poise. Wu Weishan focused on manifesting the figure's inner personality rather than seeking absolute realism of external appearances. These remarkable works won wide acclaim and recognition. In 1994, he began to work on a statue of Confucius. Confucius, the founder of Confucianism, was honored as the greatest sage and teacher for centuries. It was a daunting challenge for Wu Weishan to create a compelling portrait sculpture of the great thinker that embodies the Confucian philosophy that has endured for millennia. Yeshu the grotto sculpture of ancient China inspired Wu Weishan to adopt the old approach, which departs from anatomical accuracy and stretches the relative proportions and depiction of the inner spirit. The demeanor of Confucius resembles that of Feng Youlan, a great modern philosopher who had a lush beard, an ample forehead, and a pair of piercing eyes. In these physical features, Wu Weishan saw the spirit of Confucius. Eventually, the sculpture depicts Confucius slightly bowing his head with generosity and modesty of the ancients. Over the next 20 years, Confucius became a recurring subject matter for Wu Weishan, who produced dozens of Confucius statues for display at major cultural and educational institutions across the world. While pursuing an artist's career, Wu Weishan enrolled at Peking University to study psychology and work as a visiting scholar in Europe and the U.S., where he compared notes with fellow sculptors. In 1998, with the support of the Hong Kong philanthropist Tian Jiabing, Wu Weishan returned to teach in China and founded the Sculpture Art Research Center at Nanjing University. Here in his studio, Wu Weishan continued his portrayal of ancient and modern cultural figures. He was visited by Fei Xiaotong, Qian Weichang, Chen Xingshen, Wu Jieping, and other renowned scholars. Mr. Fei Xiaotong inscribed the name of the research center, and many scholars became friends with Wu Weishan despite the age difference. The cultural scholar Ji Xianlin, after viewing Wu Weishan's portrait sculptures, made him a present of a journal containing Ji's famous essay titled The True Voice of an Intellectual. On May 25, 1997, at the ceremony announcing an asteroid named after Yang Zhenning, Wu Weishan made the acquaintance with the renowned scientist whom he wanted to portray. The two had an instant connection. After seeing pictures of Wu Weishan's works, Yang Zhenning wrote, Wu Weishan's sculptures are highly original. 
in 2001, Wu Weishan portrayed Yang Zhenning for the first time in person. After the clay model was produced, Yang Zhenning compared his own photograph with the sculpture. His demeanor at the moment left a deep impression on Wu Weishan. Yang a decade later, at his Beijing studio, Wu Weishan again portrayed Yang Zhenning. Viewing his subject in person, Wu Weishan was struck by the scientist's impressive posture. Two hours later, Yang Zhenning examined the newly molded bust with attachment. This transformation of Yang Zhenning's attitude was a revelation to Wu Weishan, who came to experience some subtle changes in his visual language and philosophy. Yang for over two decades, Yang Zhenning has remained friends with Wu Weishan and keeping touch regularly. Yang Zhenning also introduced his best friend, the sculptor Xiong Bingming, to Wu Weishan. The relationship has benefited both artistically. As Wu Weishan's poetry life works won wide acclaim at home and abroad, his artistic career saw greater achievements. In 2006, the exhibition of Wu Weishan's sculpture art was mounted at the National Art Museum of China. This was the first time it had honored the 44-year-old sculptor in its most prominent hall. And Wu Weishan's connection with this revered institution has just begun. Thirteen years later, another major exhibition of Wu Weishan's works was held at the National Museum of China. Spectators were mesmerized by the over 170 portrait sculptures. It's a dialogue between the contemporaries and the ancients, between East and West. Yang Zhenning graced the exhibition and praised the works highly. With the passage of time, Wu Weishan completed portrait sculptures of over a hundred contemporary icons. In these works, Wu Weishan gave full attention to the spirit of traditional Chinese fine art. There is the sociologist Fei Xiaotong 
with his scintillating sagely smile. The artist Gu Jingzhou, with precise meticulousness. The composer Niar tensely contemplating his rhythmical structure. The mathematician Chen Xingshen, with affectionate wisdom. The painter Xu Beihong, with a defiant yet humble inner strength. The educationist Tao Xingzhi holding a volume to offer enlightening instruction. The poet Wen Yiduo with his intense gaze and burning passion generated by loyalty and fortitude. The enterprising engineer Zhan Tianyou and the Buddhist master Hong Yi deeply concerned with the human condition. never failing to capture the most revealing features of his subjects. Wu Weishan has matured in the stylized approach, and the spiritual resources of his subjects in turn have offered Wu Weishan valuable sustenance to enrich his inner world. Wu Weishan is a very important part of the Chinese dialect. His work is in the way 开辟了我们中国雕塑艺术的一种一种先河吧，跟传统文化、跟当代文化能够比较很好的结合，啊，这个是它的一个很大的特点。The year 2003 was a vital juncture in Wu Weishan's career as an artist. In that year, Anthony Stones, president of the Royal Society of Portrait Sculptors in the UK, paid a visit to China. And met Wu Weishan at a cultural exchange event. The nearly 70 years old classical sculpture master became friends with Wu Weishan, who was in his early 40s. A conversation lasting over an hour led to a spontaneous collaboration between them. 就是我对着他书香，他对着我书香。他书我的方法是用一种西方的分析法，正面、侧面。正侧面等等各个角度来进行对照，用轮廓性对应的方式来塑造。而我呢，是用浑腾法，一把犁，在塑造的时候，眉毛胡子一把抓。Such a single grasp approach left the British sculptor astonished. 他觉得很奇怪，我怎么用这样的手法，也不同于他们理解的中国的学院式的手法。我的手法是我自己的，这个自己来自于中国民间的。艺术来自于中国优良的传统，也来自于我对西方文明的理解。这正是我们交流的价值所在。最后，我们相互欣赏，相互认可。Later, Wu Weishan invited the British sculptor to view his recently finished work titled "Sleeping Child." This tiny bust fascinated Anthony Stones. "Sleeping Child" was created on a casual occasion. A friend had a baby, and invited Wu Weishan to come over and take the hand and foot impressions. Upon arriving, Wu Weishan looked at the child and was instantly inspired. 当时他才四个月，那种可爱的形象，真是人类最美好的童年的象征。Wu Weishan took a block of clay and made a portrait of the lovely child in slumber. Anthony Stones fell in love with the work and brought it to the UK to his colleagues at the Royal Society of Portrait Sculptors. Shortly after, the 41-year-old Wu Weishan received his first major international honor, the Pangolin Prize from the Royal Society of Portrait Sculptors. He was the first Asian recipient of the award. For Wu Weishan, this international award was a recognition of his theoretic accomplishments. After years of studying and exploring with the traditional approach, Wu Weishan came to structure a fresh theoretical system of artistic creation that would exert a far-reaching influence. Wu Weishan called the system freehand sculpture. 
Wu Weishan's freehand sculpture system has infused his portraits of historical figures with creativity. While portraying Laozi, he managed to put the philosopher's understanding of duality and affinity into concrete forms. Pointing at the heavens with his index finger, Laozi resembles a grand and solemn ritual vessel. And the inscriptions of Tao Te Ching symbolize his originality and erudition. The freehand sculpture of Wu Weishan has proved a significant contribution and a subject deserving in depth academic study. Wu Weishan is a very important thing to do with the Chinese language. The Chinese language is a very important thing to do with the Chinese language. The Chinese language is a very important thing to do with the Chinese language. The Chinese language is Inquiry about the way is a model of freehand sculpture. The thought-provoking demonstration of the ideas of Confucius and Laozi is based on a legendary dialogue of the two thinkers. Laozi, Sangshan,如水。那么，在这里，作为道家思想的这个元素，水，它在这个雕塑当中要充分体现出来。孔子，他是著作，他的文理状。Today, Wu Weishan's freehand sculpture has earned its place alongside realism and abstract modernism in the realm of sculpture. His treatises Freehand Sculpture and Eight Major Styles of Chinese Sculpture have been translated into English, German, Korean, and Portuguese, and studied in countries across the world. Since 2012, Wu Weishan's sculpture works have been showcased the world over. At the joint invitation of the National Committee on United States-China Relations and China's permanent mission to the United Nations, on September 4, 2012, the international exhibition of Wu Weishan's sculpture art came to the United Nations headquarters. The opening ceremony was attended by nearly 200 prominent figures, including top UN officials and diplomats, and UA representatives of nearly 100 countries. The importance and the role of the individual. He says to me that by respecting each other and working together, we can create the future we want. In his speech, Mr. Ban Ki Mu lauded Wu Weishan's sculptural works as embodying the soul of a nation, as well as the soul of all humanity. Two months later, the international touring exhibition of the art of Wu Weishan opened at the Palazzo Venezia in Rome, Italy. This was the first time that the Renaissance style mentioned had exhibited the sculptural works of a Chinese artist. In the work titled A Dialogue Across Space and Time, Wu Weishan portrayed how the Renaissance giant Leonardo da Vinci and his Chinese counterpart, each occupying an end of the imagined space, gazed at each other. This is a dream. 
我们的文明之间是可以对话的。我们的艺术尽管有不同，但是我们的真善美是相同的。After the show, a dialogue across space and time entered the collection of Italy's cultural ministry. And was put on permanent display in the country's national museum at Palazzo Venezia. In 2020, following the 500th anniversary of Da Vinci's death, another copy of the work was established in an Italian city of Vinci. La sculptura del maestro Weishan. Rappresenta sicuramente una delle espressioni più avanzate dell'arte cinese, ma anche del panorama internazionale della scultura. È particolarmente famoso in Italia il suo gruppo monumentale, la barca di Baishi e Leonardo da Vinci, che eh, mette insieme, proprio in maniera plastica, evidente, grazie alle due grandi statue di bronzo, la cultura occidentale con la cultura cinese. Le due figure altamente simboliche che sono presenti in un contesto d'eccellenza. In 2019, Wu Weishan was made an academician and recipient of the Medal of Michelangelo in recognition of his outstanding accomplishments in sculpture and his contributions to Sino-Italian artistic exchanges. A me interessa molto anche il primo lavoro, i primi lavori di Wu Weishan la ritrattistica, le sue opere monumentali collocate in spazi pubblici trasmettono un messaggio culturale importante insieme alla tradizione cinese passata e presente. In December 2012, Wu Weishan's sculpture work Nature and Humanity in Harmony won the Soul Gold Award in the sculpture category of the Louvre International Arts Exhibition. Wu Weishan was the first Chinese winner of the honor in over 120 years. C'est la sculpture qui est le messager de de Wu Weishan et à travers ce lieu, qu'est-ce qui rentre, qu'est-ce qui passe dans sa sculpture, il passe certainement la culture chinoise, euh, la pensée chinoise, je dirais, euh, plutôt que culture, je dirais pensée chinoise, euh, les thèmes par exemple qui sont euh, très importants dans sa sculpture, qui sont euh, Lao Tzu, Confucius. These are personalities that are very proper to China, which are the fundamentals. The thoughts of Lao Tzu and Confucius are the fundamentals of the Chinese thinking. The statues of Leonardo da Vinci and Xi Bai Shi are engaging in an imagined dialogue. In 2012, in Paris, a real dialogue took place between Wu Weishan and Mr. Claude Abbe, then president of the French Academy of Fine Arts. At the time, Wu Weishan was in Paris as part of a delegation of Chinese artists. Upon meeting Wu Weishan, Claude Abbe inquired about a sculpture he came across in China. He showed Wu Weishan the sketch of what he considered a masterpiece and asked about its maker. Wow. 上面是我创作的黄炳红雕像，是他手写画下来的，还有一些法文我不认识，记在旁边。我说这是我的作品，他突然拥抱，很感动，很激动。他说我以为是一个一百岁多岁的老艺术家的作品。Art has dissolved all barriers of geography, language, and culture. The two sculptors decided to hold a joint exhibition in France titled Sculptures in Dialogue. Okay. This is a dialogue of the exhibition. The exhibition is from Kelouda Abachi. He took my work, 20 years, and took my 20 years. He took a very small piece of the exhibition on the floor. He took a very small piece of the exhibition on the floor. He took a very small piece of the exhibition on the floor. He took a very Durel 
de Chine à Paris. Alors, étant donné qu'il ne parle pas euh, français, moi je ne parle pas chinois, euh, notre, euh, notre dialogue s'est fait euh, entre sculptures interposées. Wu Weishan realized that through dialogues like this, his pantheon of Chinese cultural figures could cross national borders and settle in countries around the world. Wu Weishan's Brown's group sculpture titled A Spiritual Encounter focused on the interaction between Confucius and Socrates in the setting of an ancient marketplace in central Athens. This is where the ancient Greek civilization sprung up. At the foot of the Acropolis was once the most vital venues for the exchange of ideas. The famous disputations by Socrates have unfolded here. Παραμένοντας, δεν θα πω τοπικός με την έννοια του local, αλλά θα πω εθνικός, γίνεται παγκόσμιος, γίνεται οικουμενικός και νομίζω ότι είναι μια, ένας τρόπος, μια διαδρομή που αξίζει τον κόπο να συνεχιστεί. At the National University of Kiev in Ukraine, Wu Weishan's work, The Gate of Souls, shows the dialogue between Ukrainian poet Taras Shevchenko and Chinese poet Du Fu from the Tang Dynasty. This is the dialogue between the two of them. The two of them have a common dream. Du Fu is a great man. He is a great man. He is a great man. He is a great man. A professional sculptor, Wu Weishan is also devoted to the medium of calligraphy and painting. He often shared his insights with his family. For Wu Weishan and his wife, such moments of leisure are a rare luxury. Apart from artistic creation, Wu Weishan has served as director of the Fine Art Institute of Chinese National Academy of Arts and president of the Chinese Sculpture Institute. Since 2014, he has been director of the National Art Museum of China and is now responsible for the institution that witnessed his early success. Under Wu Weishan, the National Art Museum of China mounted the National Donations and Collections and Classics and Collection Exhibition Series. These displays of classical works by old masters, such as Qi Bai Shi, Pan Tian Shou, Fu Bao Shi, and Xu Bei Hong, 
have been sensational, visited by over a million people each year. The Beauty in New Era exhibition series has become the most influential brand name of the institution in the past decade. As a country artist, it is the power of the people. It is the power of the image of the time. It is the space of the time. It is the society and culture. It is the power of the people. 新时代，我自己本人和中国的艺术家们、理论家们、文化学者们也身体力行，举办国际交流展、会世界雕塑大会，为南京青奥会组织世界雕塑家们来进行创作。所以这些都是很有意义的一些事情。Working as the museum's director during the day, Wu Weishan devotes his evenings and weekends to his sculptures. Most of the time, he has a brief rest between meetings or on the road. In spite of such a heavy workload, Wu Weishan has created another masterpiece: the statue of the great thinker Karl Marx. At the time. The German side proposed a statue of Karl Marx in his early years, but Wu Weishan insisted on the image of Marx as an established thinker. Marx 的利益就是一个思想家、哲学家，回到了自己的故乡。这个雕像啊，它应该要与周边的建筑要协调，在手法上、造型上、形式上，要与后中的德国文化。历史、艺术与马克思故乡这样一个具有着深厚的历史底蕴的一个古老的城市要相融合，所以我选择了马克思，从容迈步，设计了屋顶五米高这样一个尺度，而且用青铜铸造。吴伟山的 insistence was finally approved by the German side. After much consultation, Wu Weishan finalized the version depicting an adult Marx striding confidently. On countless occasions, Wu Weishan revised and improved on the statue. The last revision was made in December 2017, when Wu Weishan demanded that the statue, awaiting casting in Shanxi, be brought back to Beijing to change some details. This statue is in the Shilu style. Shilu feel and attention to the space and the surface is very different. So, I went to the museum to bring the statue to the museum to the museum to the museum to the museum to the museum. After two years and three months, the statue of Karl Marx was completed. As the work was consigned to the flight destined for Germany, Wu Weishan felt a glow in his heart. That day was particularly cold, but I can say my heart was warm. When I saw the plane flying in the sky, he went to Marx's home. This feeling was very touching. On May 5th, 2018, in Trier, the hometown of Karl Marx, the great thinker's likeness by Wu Weishan was unveiled. The brown statue weighs 2.3 tons and measures 5.5 meters. Echoing Karl Marx's date of birth, its establishment was approved by the city's council of Trier. Today, the sun is very bright. On November 14, 2017. Wu Weishan accepted in Paris the corresponding membership at the plenary meeting of the French Academy of Fine Arts. 
He was the second Chinese artist so honored after Mr. Wu Guanzhong. The Academy recognized Wu Weishan sculpture as a great work that embodied the Oriental aesthetics and the artistic values of all humanity, and praised it as a symbol of the new spirit of a Chinese era. Il est vraiment un artiste en pleine activité qui fonce et il a une très belle énergie et surtout il a une curiosité qui est sa grande qualité. Il est ouvert vers les autres et c'est pour ça qu'on l'aime beaucoup. Weishan, évidemment, il y a toute une partie de l'œuvre qui est euh, inspirée de euh, la littérature euh, et de la culture euh, spécifiquement chinoise, mais son œuvre, elle est universelle, elle n'est pas euh, chinoise, c'est est une, est une œuvre d'un grand sculpteur et qui a énormément de talent. Je l'ai vu travailler, euh, d'abord il a une connaissance du métier à l'évidence exceptionnelle, et en même temps, euh, il y a un, un, un pouvoir de création. Et surtout, oui, ce qui est impressionnant chez, chez Wei Shan, c'est cette, cette force créative. En mars 25, 2022, le président de la République de Belarus a signé un décret pour award Wu Wei Shan la Medaille de Francis Scarina, le pays le plus national honor pour les contributions à l'art, la culture, la science et la technologie. With his sculpture works, Wu Weishan has constructed a bridge for cultural exchanges between China and the wider world. Versions of his inquiry about the way now stand at the Singapore Chinese Cultural Center and the National Art Museum of Belarus. Smiling Pierre de Coubertin graces the IOC headquarters in Lausanne, Switzerland. The centennial monument commemorating Chinese revolutionaries' years in France in the early 20th century is established in Nice. South Korea hosts a Wu Weishan sculpture park, and Japan is home to the statues of Master Ying Yuan and Master Jian Zhen. With a judicious balance of overall spirit and meticulous detail, these works allow spectators to peer into the minds of these towering giants. The galaxy of original thinkers on their pedestals will enlighten minds for generations to come. Kuturi,西洋耶稣里,同样耶稣里,应该看到的是,啊,其实,呃,本身的意义,乌维山教授的耶稣的圣意,是否有多难呢?这个部分,我们可以看到。그러면 어떤 부분들이 우회상 교수의 예술성을 우리가 볼수 있느냐라고 하면 그 중심에는 결국은 그 안에 들어있는 동양적인 사상 그래서 우회상 교수의 예술의 중심은 결국은 사람이다 사람을 대상으로 사람과 이 사회 사람과 자연이 함께 가는 그러한 생각을 작품 속에 녹았다 Wu Weishan's original goal was to see his portraits of prominent Chinese individuals standing in countries across the world. As his goal became reality, Wu Weishan grew from a creator and educator of art into a thinker and felicitator of the cultural exchanges between the East and West. So today, 
在不断召唤着我。我想，一切有形的东西，它只有把无形的精髓表现进去，这种有形才有价值。With over 600 sculptural works, scores of theoretic treatises, over a thousand public exhibitions and academic lectures, and countless works of calligraphy and paintings, Wu Weishan has demonstrated his exceptional talent and commitment. With his tireless explorations of the Eastern and Western cultures, he is composing a legend of a contemporary artist. A legend of his own, the era, and the world as well. I was a stone. My roots are from the Chinese Empire. It's the history of the Chinese Empire. It's the roots of the Han Dynasty. 这片厚重的土地上，对于我来讲，当我到的那个风烛残年啊、颤颤巍巍的这个回望我所走过的人生道路，再看看我堆积成山的那些作品的时候，我会恍然地讲出一句话：啊，这就是。无为善。